So I help organize these events normally, so I'm not usually on this side of the podium. So I'm going to time myself. <laughs> and everybody that uh, I have cut off in the past will probably laugh if I go over time limit. But anyways, I'm Jamie Kidwell. I'm from the city of Ann Arbor. I'm the sustainability associate, and I'm managing one component of this grant that is focused on increasing energy efficiency in rental housing. And so the scope of the project is just what I said, um, but thinking about it community-wide, how do we get our rental properties to be more efficient, not only structurally, but how do we get some of our renters to um, engage in sort of uh, more energy conservation behavior as well. And while I'm seated at the city of Ann Arbor, this is a countywide project, and we are working closely with a number of different partners. Uh, city of Ann Arbor, City of Ypsilanti, Washtenaw County, uh, the Housing Commission, Eastern Michigan University, and University of Michigan as well. Um, there's a bar graph on the side uh, that I just wanted to show that we do really have a lot of rental properties in this area, and it is a really large, and even the majority of our populations in some of these communities. So it definitely sort of centers around the equity conversation as to how do we better engage with this group of residents. And this should not, I don't think, be surprising to most people, but a lot of our rental population is concentrated in Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti, um, and then a lot along the Washtenaw Corridor as well. So a lot in Ypsilanti Township, a lot in Pittsfield Township. And you can see there are some very large concentrations. Also probably not surprising, a lot of those renters are students. And so while this is not specifically calling that out, this is showing uh, percent renters under age 25. And why I think that's important is, again, sort of reaching these populations. We have people that are moving into rental units that are just moving out of their homes, sort of first time not living with their parents, first time signing leases. They're a really hard group to get the right information to. And so an important component of this grant is that we're not just looking at it from one side. We're not just targeting the landlords, the property owners. We're not just targeting the renters. We're really trying to get both of those segments. Um, that's kind of the perfect nexus. And when we meet with landlords, they talk a lot about how they want their renters to be more energy efficient. We meet with renters, they talk about a lot how they want their landlords to make their properties more efficient. So there is this really, this nexus that we need to connect a little bit better. Um, and then even breaking it down into the different tenant groups that were um, trying to involve in this project. There are student renters, totally different ballgame. Um, there are market rate renters, um, there are low income renters, and then we also have some tenants that are living in our city owned um, housing commission properties as well that have some different circumstances. So why rental housing? Um, here I'm showing a graph here that has the median income by household type. Uh, this oversimplifies it a little bit, but I just want to get at the point that there are some huge discrepancies in income levels between renters and, home, and homeowners. And while that's not always the case, there is um, sort of this differential impact that renters might have to face. And so when I talk about renters being differentially impacted, I mean that in a number of different ways. If they are indeed a much lower income, then fluctuations in utility cost or fluctuations in weather like we've just had where the heat needs to be turned up a little bit more to make yourself comfortable, that really affects our low-income renters and residents a lot more than others. Um, also, renters are not, they're less empowered to take action. If they're renting a home, they often can't make the changes that would make their house more comfortable per their lease or per their landlord. So even if they are more energy efficient minded, they can't always take those and make those changes. Um, another reason that we're targeting rental housing is housing affordability. So if you really think about rent, um, broader than just what you're paying for rent, but if you start to think, my total cost of living is my rent, plus my utilities, plus my transportation, plus my food, um, then getting down that number of energy cost and sort of decreasing the cost of housing through energy efficiency will help make our housing stock a little more affordable. And then information gaps. I think I already mentioned the first time student renters but we really do have a lot of the population that just the right information isn't reaching. They don't know how to find a better, more efficient place to live. And so we think there's a big opportunity just through education to make some difference. Um, and then split incentives, which is one of the main problems and barriers that's talked about with rental housing. Um, but you have, you know, if a renter is paying the utilities and the landlord doesn't really have any motivation to make the property more efficient, Turn around, if the landlord is paying the utilities, then you often see the open window in the winter when the renter is a little uncomfortable because they're not paying those bills. 
And then one more thing that I wanted to add is that the city of Ann Arbor did adopt a climate action plan. The city of Ypsilanti did as well pretty recently. Here in Ann Arbor, um, in terms of community greenhouse gas emissions, our residential sector is about 20%. So there's a big opportunity to lower those community-wide emissions through energy efficiency and rental housing as well. And then just sort of to put the potential impact in terms of numbers, here's a map that shows our rental housing parcels by square footage in Washtenaw County. And this is actually only including City of Ipsy, City of Ann Arbor, Pittsfield Township, and Ipsy Township. But those jurisdictions alone are over 47 million square feet of rental housing. If you use Midwestern energy costs, estimates, that's over $52 million spent um, out of the pockets of some of our renters. Saving just 10% of that in terms of money could be over $5 million. And that's really money that could go back into our local economies, because most of our energy comes from coal here in Michigan, which is sourced from outside the state. So if we can save that money, we can keep it in our local economies. And just a snapshot of Ann Arbor, because we are in Ann Arbor right now. About 30 million square feet of rental property. And one of the things that I think is very interesting is in terms of square footage, it's not just your big multifamily complexes. About a, a third of our square footage here in Ann Arbor is units that are three or less. So your duplexes, your single family converted. And that's something that's not usually targeted in typical policies. And then we have a pretty old rental housing stock here in Ann Arbor. Arbor. Over 80% of our parcels have buildings built before 1975. So I talked about the challenges a little bit, but we've got the split incident. We've got a high turnover, so the students and other renters, they tend to move a whole lot. They don't stay in one place. Um, housing affordability, while it is one of the reasons that we can uh, use this project to increase that, there's also a concern that landlords might raise the cost of rents if their energy, um, if their units are more efficient and sort of market to a different population. So that's something we need to be really wary of. Um, the in information gaps, the challenge of where do we actually intervene? What's the right place to get the information out? Um, there's a high cost of making some of these investments, and that's something that we hear from um, property owners and landlords. And then there are fewer programs targeted at rental properties or that are easy for rental properties to do. You know, Better Buildings in Michigan was a recent program. A lot higher uptake with our single-family homeowners than our rental properties. So through this project, we're really taking a lot of different approaches. Um, data collection. How do we collect more information? Um, we already have in both Ypsilanti and Ann Arbor rental housing inspection programs, so can we use that as an intervention point to collect a little more information about utility cost um, in our units? That's something that we don't actually have um, at the city or the county level. That's all based through the utility. Um, education and outreach. Again, I think that's a lot of bang for the buck in terms of our younger renters. Uh, making structural improvements, finding ways to do cost sharing so both the tenant and the landlord are making investments into their property together and so there's less of that split incentive. Um, rebates and incentives, so how can we help you know, pull the right levers and make people make the right improvements. Financing programs and then technical assistance. So how do we make it easier for people to make improvements to the rental properties? And I wanted to include just a few more tangible Things. I know I just sort of gave the bullet list, but to you know, actually show you that we are doing some things. Um, A2energy.org is a new website that was launched by the city. It has tips for homeowners, commercial owners, landlords, renters about how to save energy. Um, also tips for how to finance making investments to your property. Um, it's a little bit slicker of a web page than our normal city pages. So it's a little more fun to look at, so take a visit at that. Uh, we've worked with the Housing Commission to pilot some uh, Ecobee programmable thermostats in Baker Commons. Um, these thermostats are supposed to be a little easier to program, a little more intuitive, so we're going to be tracking to see if those actually make any improvements with the tenants, and all of those savings will be to the tenants in those units since they pay the utilities. Though um, Housing Commission thinks they're going to save some money just by labor costs because these thermostats will actually, um, you can sort of check them remotely so they can sort of see if the temperature is working, if the heat's on in different units. Um, we're working with uh, the city of Bloomington, Indiana, and a number of other cities to develop an online tool to help renters learn about the uh, full cost of housing. So again, thinking about rent and energy and transportation, and try to help them get into the most efficient house while they're looking for their properties. And then finally, we're working on a loan fund that's only available to rental units. Um, and we're working with some U of M students 
um, to design hopefully a low interest or zero interest loan so that we can keep use that as seed money to keep making investments in the community um, and use that as an opportunity to collect some information on what different is air sealing working you know to save the most in the community or um, insulation really just help landlords know a little bit more about what's the biggest bang for their buck and we do have some of that information out there but we've heard that they sort of want to learn it through their peers so how can we use that to actually make a little more information available um, and use that also to target some of our smaller properties so those again with the single family converted those with units that are three and under that there aren't as many programs designed for so that's a quick overview um, if you want to learn more information, a2gov.org slash green rental. Um, or feel free to give me an email or a call. I'm happy to talk a little bit more. I think that's it.